Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Southern T. It's the girl Lady J back to bring you my commentary, thoughts, and opinions on, of course, your favorite ladies in the female rap game. So before I get started, go ahead and hit the thumbs up, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And you know, go ahead on my Twitter, on my Instagram, and hit that follow button for me as well at Southern T with two A's at the end. Let's go and get into the bullshit. All right, y'all. So the first topic. The uh, first topic that I want to get into is Onika Tanya. So, um, fans are wondering if Nikki shaded Offset a few days ago last week. Um, in my most humble opinion, she did. So, if you are confused on what happened, um, Offset's flop uh, song album, well, the album ain't came out yet, but y'all, it's going to flop too. But um, the song he dropped, I, what the fuck is the name of it? I think it's called Fan. I think it's fan. Craig me down below if I'm wrong. But he dropped this song where he was cosplaying as Michael Jackson in the video. The song, I believe, was called Fan, okay? And so, you know, a lot of people felt like all of that stuff that happened with Kenny and Offset was kind of to kind of push that song and to, you know, make it do well with the PR stunts and the gimmicks like his wife liked to do. But um, it didn't work because it flopped. I think it went bubbling under. It didn't even debut on the Hot 100. It still ain't up there. So Nikki had tweeted out, you know, after all of that child, and then, you know, she had the bubble emojis with it, like, to indicate, because, you know, did it was bubbling under, okay, on the bubbling under charts. And then she was posting them MJ memes, like, MJ looking like he in a disappointment, baby, looking down at you in disappointment, because, baby, what is you doing? So, you know, people felt like she was being a little bit shady, but, I mean, they've been, you know, it, it, it's been a little bit tip for tap for me, you know, and a lot of people do feel like Cardi and them, Offset and them, at least they camp. Um, kind of made some phone calls after, you know, Kenny, you know, um, went live with his homeboy issuing threats to Offset. And even though, yeah, he did go live, it was on the internet, that ch that man ain't had no followers, okay? he The people have barely seen that, okay? So, I mean, as quick as they found that out, child, calls was made, believe it or not. And on top of that, there was people over there from their camp, from Cardi and them camp, that actually was threatening to, you know, make some calls, call his probation officer. Even Jason Lee was talking about, you know, making contact with his probation officer. So, I mean, it is what it is. So, if she was being shady, oh, oh the fuck well. What they going to do? Put in some music and respond? Because they have yet to do that, baby. Do you hear me? But, um, you know, let me know what you think about it down below. Now, speaking of Onika, she is also going to be the main headliner at iHeart's Jingle Ball um, you know, at this show this year, which the pre-sale tickets have sold out. You can catch the general admission note on this Friday if you missed the pre-sale because, you know, baby, it's sold out, you know, especially with Nikki being a headliner. So um, speaking of that, I kind of want to piggyback off of that a little bit because I noticed on Stan Twitter a few days ago, there was some debate that people was having about Nicki Minaj's rollout. And I guess it was kind of triggered by some, what a YouTuber had to say about it. Now, my thing is this, um, I don't want to be that one to compare Beyonce to Nicki because, you know, Beyonce is Beyonce. But, I mean, truth be told, in my most humble opinion, I feel like Nicki is the rap Beyonce. Not necessarily how she moved, but just how big her fan base is. And, you know, I don't, I didn't really hear people say too much about Beyonce's lack of effort this this rollout. And that's not to say I think Nicki is showing lack of effort, but Beyonce literally put out no visuals to nothing Okay, she barely promoted the album like that, you know what I'm saying? And really, not too many people I've seen, of, of um, especially YouTubers and stuff like that, they wasn't really coming down Beyonce's throat for that, you know what I'm saying? Because I guess she Beyonce. But, you know, come Nicki, you know, they want to make it all, you know, oh, well, she needs this and she needs that. Uh, Nicki don't got to let y'all know what she is doing, baby, okay? So, I mean, just let her do her thing. The Jingle Ball, um, the I Heart Jingle Ball, didn't nobody know about that until it came out. So, you know, she just keeping her moves made in silence, which to me, you know, go with float your boat, baby, okay? So, you know, I don't really care to know Nikki's every move because that means if we know in every move, um, the, 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 you know, the, the trolls and the duds and the ops, they gonna know the moves too. So, I mean, if she wanna keep it, you know, moving in silence, then baby, do that by all means. But I don't think that y'all should be coming down her throat for, for you know, um, how y'all feel that she should be rolling out her album because regardless I think um, Pink Friday 2 is gonna do numbers okay more than what the fuck Scarlett did and that's not to throw shade at Doja but 
I mean, y'all don't become Doja had an extravagant ass rollout and her numbers ain't up to par with, you know, what the hype was, if you ask me. So, you know, I'll get into that in a minute, but let me know what you think about that down below. So the next thing I want to get into um, is Cardi B, chat. So Cardi B was on Hot Ones, which I'm not even going to lie to you. I did not watch. I didn't. There was nothing like um viral that got posted from it to for me to go and watch and get my thoughts on the only thing that i really seen and it wasn't viral but it did get reposted i think to the neighborhood talk um you know because you know she loved to run everything through the neighborhood talk baby do you hear me but no she said that um she avoids rapping about her struggles in music because people undermine her pain okay <laughs> take a listen to what she said so um a lot of people tell me that I should put my pain, my struggle, in my music. A lot of my pains and a lot of my struggles or whatever the crap is going on, I feel like I, the, the masses might not be able to relate. You know what I'm saying? Like the, yeah. like the masses might not be able to relate. Like it's like, oh my gosh, they're tearing a new asshole on Twitter on me because I said this, this and that. The average person is like, girl, Shut up. <laughs> I got I to gotta work up at 7 in the morning. I got to do this, this, and that. So it's that like I don't really like to make music like I would normally do an intro. Like I would just literally like to make my intro of everything, addressing all the bullshit, addressing the bitches, addressing the shit that I got to go through, and then, and then just the whole album just be about fun because I like fun. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I like fun. So... I think the first, like my intro, I feel like it should be like just me popping my shit, popping my shit. And after that, all right, let's pop some. So let me know what you think about that. Um, need I mind you, she's talking about fans and trolls. Like, bitch, you right. I, I, I'm i not finna relate to that shit. Cause baby, get the fuck off the internet and get into reality. Like, are you serious? Them is not struggles. Them is, bitch, you can control your ass being on the internet and what you respond to. Baby, you talking about stand arguments, child. Like, get the entire fuck, okay? So, like I said, um, I don't know. I think Cardi B want to have a struggle, you know, so bad as of right now. She she want a hate train. You know, she said it last week. She feel like she, you know, she got a little hate train going on because her song Bongos with Megan flopped. Uh, nobody want to hear that shit. Nobody want to hear that weak shit, ho, okay? So, I mean... She, she like I said, I, it's just it's the sympathy for me, but I'm not gonna get too much off into that, um, because at the end of the day, Bongos is continuing to free fall off them charts, baby. It didn't drop another 14 spots. It's dropping more and more every week. I mean, it didn't even it have a, a debut that outdid Red Ruby the Sleeves, and that had no push and no music video, and you had a two million dollar budget with two Grammy award winning bitches with two Grammy award winning vaginas, so make it make sense to me. So you know, um, it is what it is. But speaking of Cardi, a few days ago, there was a viral clip um, of Kanye West from back in 2018 during the Nicki Hate train, mind you. Uh, Kanye, a clip of him back in 2018 commenting on a few people, and Cardi was one of them people. And, you know, ooh, excuse me, I don't want to play the clip because I'm not really sure since it's unreleased. Um, I don't want to get copyrighted. But basically, sum it up to say, he said that um, Cardi B was basically an industry plant. He did say the word industry plant, um, that she was used as a pawn to replace Nikki, which obviously didn't work because Nikki is thriving and Cardi is, you know, where she is on the charts with bongos. And um, yeah, he basically was saying that, you know, Cardi B seeing it as a blessing, but baby, you, you really have no idea what's going on. You were used, the industry plotted to use you, and you were an industry plan that they seek to, you know, they sought out to replace Nikki with. So that's basically what um, Kanye has said, but Nikki told y'all this years ago and y'all called her crazy. And to be told, a lot of people behind the scenes believe this, which is why I think Cardi has yet to have those big time features um, you know, like a Beyonce or, you know what I'm saying? Like a Taylor Swift or, um, like a future. For, when you think about it, Cardi really don't collaborate with male rappers like that. And honestly, I think that has something to do with her husband. But a lot of the times I'll be feeling like, um, a lot of the people behind the scenes know the same things and say the same things. So, you know, that clip went viral. It got reposted. And of course, um, Cardi's lap dogs and her, the blogs that she pay, like him, Barbie and whatnot, um, she tried to get them to come clear it up, but ultimately she ended up, um, ooh, excuse me, ultimately she ended up just 
posting a recent clip. I think it was like from last year, Kanye getting interviewed by one of her other lab dogs, Jason Lee. Um, basically where he was like saying that, you know, um, he's always believed in Cardi, yada, yada, whoop, whoop, blase, blase. But my thing is, baby, I don't give a fuck of, of what people be saying on them interviews in front of the world because, you know, they, they want to say what sounds good and what looks good. Baby, it's what they be saying behind them closed doors and behind the scenes that matters to me. And that's what got leaked out. So, baby, you can't come out and fix that. It is what it is. Okay. So, you know, she tried to clean it up, but she deleted the tweet because people is going to have their opinions regardless. And I think she realized that. So she just deleted the tweet, um, which, you know, caused her to come back and apparently like a shady tweet in response to Ice Spice, which her and her lap dogs is calling photoshopped and fake. But I'm going to talk about it anyway, regardless, because I did see some screen recordings, but let you tell it or let them tell it. As a matter of fact, they're going to call it fake, baby. But anyways, um, the, the people are saying that they caught Cardi and 4K like in a shady tweet to Ice Spice, um, you know, that basically insinuated that I know you're not talking about Cardi being an industry plant when Ice Spice then came up out of here. And she's like basically insinuating that Ice Spice is an industry plant. And so, you know, um, either she liked it and, did, did, you know, unliked it or, you know, like they say, it was fake. But I believe there was some merit to that. OK. And I spice seemingly came back and responded and was like, I only fuck with pretty bitches facts. OK. So maybe that was a response to what, you know, the, the alleged Cardi shade. Maybe not. Who knows? But, you know, the timing was very interesting. And after all of that, you know, I guess Cardi still saw that, you know, people were still running with the narrative that she's an industry plan and that she really didn't have any talent. And so she um, came back with this video and this is what she had to say. Take a listen. I'm trying to like, trying not to disappoint my fans because I've been trying to I've been trying to like be Cardi B the professional, but Belkali's the demon. It'd be really close to come out, and I don't want that because I don't want to disappoint my fans. I'm gonna just say this: people love Cinderella to Cinderella get a glass house. And let me keep it cute. And to my haters and to y'all motherfuckers that want to see mess, leave me the fuck alone. Because I come with receipts. I come with receipts, years old receipts. I got receipts on all you niggas and you bitches. And I will fucking bring this internet into fucking shambles, bitch. You don't even fucking know. I will really... It will be crazy. So let me keep it cute. I have mature. Keep me there. Because I will fucking, this shit will go down, bitch. I will land a motherfucking heli in this bitch. Facts. And I won't even just say it out of my mouth. I literally got real receipts with dates. So leave me alone. Because y'all y'all not going to be ready for that. Yeah, I'm not going to be ready for nothing. Let me mind my business. Let me keep working. Let me be a mom. Let me keep putting music out. Don't, don't try to bring Belkalis out. Love Cardi B. Don't bring Belkalis. Leave me there. Okay? Okay. So let me know what you think and how you feeling about that. My thing is, baby, do what the fuck you think you're going to do, what you say you're going to do. If you about it, be about it. If you about it, be about it. Stand on it. Stand on it, baby. If you about it, be about it. Okay? Don't be issuing idle, empty, blank threats. Okay? Don't do that. Don't be shooting no blanks. Okay? If you want to put it on the flow, put it on the flow. Okay? According to you and your girl Lotto. Put it on the flow. What you, what, what, what you got? Okay, so I mean, at the end of the day, need I mind you, again, she is responding to fans. This is what she believe is her struggle, y'all. This is what she believe is her struggle, her responding to people on the internet and their opinions. You cannot and will never change their opinions. If that's just what they think, that's what they think. Okay, so my thing is, if you're going to do it, stand on it. But these receipts, baby, don't just sit up there and say you got them. Put, put them on the table. Let me see what you got. Okay, but I really don't think as much because if it was, she would have been released by now. But you know, it is what it is. Let me know what you're thinking, how you're feeling down below, baby. So the next topic I want to get into is Ice Spice. So I believe Ice Spice, she had gave an interview with Variety and she spoke on um, that fake re uh, female rap unity bullshit. 
So when they asked her about, you know, competition in the industry, I Spice said, it is a competition at the end of the day. People want to be all, I'm a girl's girl, but then behind the scenes being bitches, basically we hear the girls are doing amazing. I'm excited to see it. I feel like the competition is what keeps us all excited because I think we all secretly enjoy competing and seeing who put that shit on better and who's going to get the most views. And um, I don't even honestly see what's wrong with that. I think she was being pretty honest. You know, your girl like Lotto and Megan, they claim to be girls' girls. But baby, um, when you look at them, them rap sheets, okay, and when you look at them receipts, and especially with Lotto, all them girls who then came out to basically call Lotto out for not being a girls' girl, for being, for being a bitch behind the scenes. Um, same thing with Megan and Stallion, because you, you already know how people regard Megan right now. So, I mean... People can say that the girls, girls, all they want to, but at the end of the day, it is a competition. Every industry, if you working alongside of people, it is a competition because you want to be the best. It's not just the music industry. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, it's okay to, you know, want to support each other, but at the end of the day, it's a friendly competition. You know, Koi also spoke on it. You know, she... But Koi be hot and cold. You know, at one minute she say it's a competition. Then the next minute she say she believe in female rep unity and, and stitching all these bitches' names to her jacket when she be performing. So that should be performative. She don't know what she want to do, what she believe. But Ice Spice, um, I believe she keeping it. She keeping it a buck. Because at the end of the day, like I said, you might want her to win or whatever. And that's fine. But at the end of the day, you don't want her doing better than you. You want to see who going to, you know, win. You want to see who going to do better, who going to pull the most numbers, who going to pull the most views, who going to have the most album sales. You know what I'm saying? Who the fans is going up for the most. It is a competition at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, they're going to be the same ones reposting them stats, reposting who's viral, re reposting who's trending. You know what I'm saying? So these girls can act like... You know what I'm saying? It's not a competition, but it is, or less they wouldn't be reposting shit about stats, reposting shit about who's trending, who did what. So, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day, at the end of the day. And she kept it a book. She kept it a bean, all of that. Okay. So I most definitely agree with her because a lot of these hoes be performative as fuck. They don't be caring about no female rep unity. They do that for, for one, they did that to spite Nicki Minaj because Nicki kept it a book that she came in with that, you know, competitive ass energy and everybody else, you know, she, she was winning. <laughs> she was competitive as fuck with that energy and she was winning. And that's why they was really mad and wanted to come together and talk about, oh, let's be all one big happy family. That's bullshit. Because at the end of the day, I'm getting my money and you're getting your money. Okay. So you know, let me know how you felt about that and, you know, how you felt about Ice Spice's comments on fem uh, the fake female rap unity bullshit. So the next topic I want to get into is Doja Cat. Okay. So as y'all know, Doja Cat did release Scarlet, which was her fourth studio album. Um, the numbers is what we got to talk about, baby. Do you hear me? We got to talk about the numbers because y'all was really gassing this album in this era. And so was people look like Ebro and shit. Okay. So let's start talking about the album. Um, debuted at number four on the Billboard 200 albums charts with 72,000 sales, 88, 35 million streams. And out of that, out of them sales, 6,000 was pure sales. 6,000 in pure motherfucking sales, bitch. Um, that's trash. for Especially for someone like Doja Cat. I'm sorry. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. that that's kind of trash. And 72,000 overall, you know, when you count in streams and the pure sales, um, that's cool. Um, I think that's her lowest. Well, it's lower than Planet Her, I think. Um, and the debut at number four. My thing is when Queen debuted at number two, y'all caught that a flop. Y'all caught it a flop. So what is debuting at number four with 6,000 pure sales? Okay, overall 72,000 uh, sales. 6K pure. What is that for a superstar? And I'm not saying Doja Cat's not a superstar. I'm just saying um, the hype is not matching the sales whatsoever. And I think this is her least... Um, excuse me, get the mosquito out of here. I think this is her least... Um, out of all of the albums that she's done since she's been mainstream, like Hot Pink and Planet Her, um, and now this one, I think this is the least performing one and the, the least favorited. And it's not because she didn't have any good songs. I just think people wouldn't really feel in this whole demonic type of shit and, you know, how she was going off on her fans. I think some of that had a lot to do with the outcome of her sales. Um, but, you know, and then on top of that, she was mostly rapping and, you know, a lot of 
her the success that she had came from when she was that doing that pop shit. So, you know, when you add all that up, maybe that did impact how this album performed. But number four, to debut at number four on the Billboard Hot 200 Albums Charts is not what you call a flop. It's not. But when you look up, you know, compare it to, you know, the hype that, you know, she had for this, that she hyped it up with and how she was talking shit in these raps, how people like Ebro hyped it up and shit like that, and how people like the fans hyped it up, you would think that it would have debuted higher. It would have been a number one. You know, it would have did at least 100K first week. I mean, Rod Wave did way better than this. He hit at least 100K. So, I mean, you know, it just, it, it's, it's kind of odd. But, I mean, nevertheless, overall, number four on Billboard 200 is not bad whatsoever. But, you know, when you got people want to be hypocritical, you know, when it comes to everything that Nicki does, it's like Queen debuted at number two with like 100-something pure sales, 100-something thousand pure sales. Scarlett didn't even touch that on his fourth album. You know what I'm saying? So, and it, number four compared to number two. Well, so, if number two is a flop, what's number four? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, let me know what you think about that. Now, um, like I said from last time, the best song on the whole album, which I think everybody is in agreement with, is definitely Agora Hills. I don't know why she didn't push that first, but she definitely should have pushed that one first. That If she had more songs like that on the album and pushed more songs like that, I think she could have did way better. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, that song is a motherfucking vibe. It's a vibe, okay? Um, now, I don't understand why she's talking about not liking incels because that's all she fucks with and then when she said something about don't care what a dick then you bitch what <laughs> okay but other than that I think Agora Hills is a vibe um speaking of which it did debut on the billboard hot 100 at number 18 so you know it did a top 20 debut you know um so congrats to that I definitely do think it will be climbing the charts um the more and more it's going viral because I'm hearing a lot of people fucking with that record um the rest of her songs have debuted on the Billboard Bumbling Under charts, okay? Um, Balu, it debuted at the Bumbling Under number 23. Um, Can't Wait, which I also did like that one. It debuted on the Billboard Bumbling Under at number two. Ouchies, it had a nice beat to that one. I think that was the one uh, London on the Track produced. That debuted on the Billboard Bumbling, uh, Bumbling Under at number 19. Wet Vagina, that one had a nice beat to me. Um, that debuted on the Billboard Bumbling Under at number 14. And then... The number 12 spot on the Billboard Bubbling Under went to Gun, Doja Cat's uh, song Gun, which, yeah, it was okay, okay? So let me know how you're feeling about it, but I just think it's crazy because when Planet Her dropped, she had so many songs debut, um, you know, on the Hot 100, and, how, and now it is like all of them is debuting on the Billboard Bubbling Under with the exception of Agora Hill, so, and 6,000 pure sales is just crazy work to me, but... You know, let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling um, as far as the hype that was surrounded by Doja's album compared to how it actually performed. And of course, I know it can, you know, do more and more each week. However, this was first week. This was how how many fans were anticipating this, wanting to buy this and, you know, stream it. And it wasn't as many as expected. So, you know, let me know how you're feeling and what you're thinking down below. So the next topic I want to get into is latte. I'm sorry, latte. Um, it's a party. Mm, I ain't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I don't even think it touched 400,000 views on YouTube yet. The video was cool, whatever. It looked like any other lotto video. Um, but the actual song, I really wasn't into it. And that's no shade. It's nothing, you know, spiteful. I just really was not into that song. Honestly, it was given 21 Savage. A lot of it was given 21 Savage. And let's talk about it. There was a conversation being had around on Twitter. And I actually saw this discourse started by uh, Got the Scoop first. And it started a conversation around the fact that, huh, this is true. And it is an ob observable fact. Um, it seems like 21, after he collaborates with the male artist, he kind of passes them over to his, his side girl, Lotto. And, you know, um, it's just something that people have taken a notice to. And on top of that, isn't 21 known for saying it's a, it's a, it's a, and here she go with it's the party. Like, just making it more, more obvious, why don't you? Okay. But um, I really did feel like she was kind of sounding like 21. And, and if you listen to 21, then you know, you know. Okay. But the, the, them streams um, or them views on YouTube is hella low. I think Lil Tay did more views than that, baby. It was, it, the views is hella low. Okay, so I, I just, we ain't even going to talk about that. I don't want to embarrass the girl too much. But um, 
in the song, people felt like she was kind of coming for Koi, or at least I did, because who else are you talking about, bitch? You ain't talking about Nicki Minaj, and I don't think she's talking about Ice Spice, but I mean, she could be talking about Ice, she could be talking about Koi, could be going for both, but I really think it's for Koi, since Koi is the most recent one, um, so she said she been tweeting like she told if we gonna catch her ass outside, and um, I honestly think that applied to Koi, but I mean, it could be two killing two birds with one stone it could be for koi could be for ice could be for both i don't know but i definitely think it has been for koi since koi and lotto kind of been at odds recently um but like i said she have like it's been three four days and she ain't even hit five, half a million views like ain't even hit 500k so i don't know i find that to be a little bit odd okay but lotto want to be the it girl so bad um also i think a stripper had called lotto out and has not been fired for calling lotto out um, because apparently one of her friends texted her the night that, you know, Lotto, you know, cause she turned, I think Magic City, she turned some strip club into Lotto City or whatever. And apparently Lotto's wallet, uh, wallet had got stolen. So she picked up all the money off the floor and took it. Now I'm going to be pissed mad if my wallet gets stolen too. But if I really got money like that, I'm not going to be picking up dollars off no strip of flow, bitch. I'm not going to do it. So it's getting kind of broke. But, you know, um, yeah, Lotto kind of, she didn't really clear it up too much, but she just responded by bringing them bitches to the studio and throwing more money, I guess. But, I mean, to me, it's like, girl, if you all got stolen, cancel all the cards and call it the day. Bitch, you still got cash, don't you? So, you know, I don't know. I think it was just another PR thing, but to, just to kind of push this record that ain't going to do much of shit. But let me know what you think and how you feeling down below. Um, the next thing I want to get into is Iggy Azalea's Money Come remix that she put Big Voss Vet and Ivorian Doll on. I wasn't a fan of the Money Come song originally. I'll let y'all know that when she first dropped it. Um, I don't want to hear about a bitch talking about money making her come. Okay. But um, Big Boss Vet, she killed her part. And so did Ivorian Doll. First of all, I love some Ivorian Doll. She always be killing her shit. Like, her flow, her delivery is everything to me. I, and her accent just makes it all better. So, you know, Ivorian Doll Slay did her thing. And Big Boss Vet, I think she is so underrated. Really, both of them. But Big Boss Vet, she's been doing her thing this year. And I think she is so underrated. But she got a flow to her. She got some type of aura, demeanor to her. And I think put in Big Boss Vet and Ivorian Doll really elevated and added to the song. And honestly, it really should have just been next song. Iggy did not do this beat justice to me. Um, but, you know, maybe the next single, it'll make a little bit more sense. But, you know, um, I liked it. You know what I'm saying? I really like parts, but I liked it. And it's really just because I like the way they deliver they, you know, they raps and stuff like that. But um, if you got a chance to check out the Money Come Remix, let me know what you thought about it, how you think and how you feeling down below. So the next topic that I want to get into is the City Girls. So Carisha teases a new City Girl album coming again. So she said, I'm so excited about this City Girls album. OMG. Girl, sit the fuck down. Girl, you 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 too busy worried about everything else but an album. You up here talking about a fashion line. You up here worried about Carisha, please. You know what I'm saying? You're doing all of these things, but I haven't seen no consistent music or interest in music from Carisha. JT, on the other hand, has been very consistent with the music and, and staying relevant in the music, but Carisha not so much. And I honestly just wish the city girls would give it up as a group. Like, it's not giving. Like, JT is getting more monthly Spotify streams um as an independent artist or as a solo artist than the city girls are as a as a group on spotify like jt is getting st more streams than the city girls as a group so when it's when it's to that point baby hang it up flat screen jt go solo carisha do what you're gonna do be diddy's protege and, and let him take you to where you want to go baby because it's very clear to me um, the city girls as a as a movement or as a brand is just it's not giving it's not happening it, it wasn't happening two years ago that's when it really ended for me so I mean y'all can let me know if you're excited for a new city girls album new city girls music but baby I most definitely am not and I think honestly that's what's holding JT back a little bit and I just so wish baby girl would just go so low but you know I get the contracts and the blase blase but, you know, let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling down below. So the last topic I want to get into is Glorilla. Glorilla dropped a new song called Pop It, Trash. And I think it was some other song she dropped because I know CMG, the label, they dropped some new music. And then 
she dropped some shit with the with the with the uh what is it the cha cha rules she tried to remix the cha cha and it actually was trying to do it was just trash like the music was trash and you know glorilla you know glorilla don't really do too bad for me you know what i'm saying because on that ep she had she had a couple little songs that i like excuse me but these songs that she's been dropping has been trash puree dumpster juice baby throw it in the toilet throw it away down a sewer into the ocean baby but you know even the fish don't want to taste that shit okay gonna pollute the water so i mean it, it was trash and there's just no way i can sugarcoat it it was just trash to me she, she the beat we whooping her ass lately like i just i didn't i wasn't going for none of that new, new shit that she had dropped don't nobody want to hear that weak shit ho okay now um, when the neighborhood talk had reposted that one where she was, you know, trying to do people, the, the cha-cha, which was, I don't know why she would do that shit, but, you know, um, a lot of people was coming for her. But on Twitter, somebody has said, Lorilla, we will remember you, um, your run from May 22 to September 22, but it's over. Glorilla had responded and said, I'll never go nowhere, and I bet every dollar to your name, bitch. Um, I wouldn't bet no dollar. I wouldn't even bet 50 cents on that, Glorilla, because, baby... You have not did it since tomorrow, too. And I've been told your ass to not let that bitch use and suck the life out of your ass, but you let it happen anyways. Every time you come up, here, here she come bringing up Cardi to perform tomorrow, too, with her. You know what I'm saying? Every time you look up, it's to, like, the, first of all, people started to look at tomorrow, too, as more of a Cardi B feature Glorilla than a Glorilla feature Cardi B. And that's where your ass fucked up at. You let her come in and take a lot of your shine and let her use you to kind of stay back relevant. And it worked because ain't nobody checking for your ass no more. And I don't think you really did right with that collaboration. Like you let her be a part of it too much. Like Nikki, when she was a part of Pound Town, she still let um, Sexy have her moment. And Sexy Red followed it up with more moments and more music. And same thing with Ice Spice. But it's like Cardi never followed up tomorrow too with nothing else, and neither did Glorilla. And it was just all that they was doing, and it just like just sucked the life out of every goddamn thing. So it's like now you want to come with new music, baby. Ain't nobody checking for that shit, okay? So I think Glorilla need to go back to the drawing board, figure some shit out because people don't want to hear this shit, and this sound ain't working for me, baby. You need to figure out to, what to do with some substance, cause substance is the word of the week. And you need to figure out how to use it and, and 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 you know how to put it in your music, cause bitch, you ain't talking about shit. Ain't no substance there no more. So, you know, you need to go back to how you was in your bag with Tomorrow 2 and F&F and, F and, and uh, Blessed and, and all them type of music shits that you was putting out last year. Because this new 2023 shit is straight trash, bitch. But, you know, y'all let me know what you think and how you feeling down below. So, remember, don't get your panties in a war. Get them out the crack of your ass. This is my um, thoughts, commentary, and opinion once again. Let me know your two cents down below. But don't get crazy. Keep it cute in them comments. You will get blocked, Okay. Um, but like I said, go ahead and hit that uh, follow button and go ahead and follow me on my social media at Southern Tea with two ways, y'all. Um, you know, I check you out in the next video.